gentlemen of the jury in the court of public opinion, my name is Jared Green, and that's about the only court that matters these days. Ammon Bundy is joining you again to talk about what's going on in his world, and you need to pay attention. This affects all of us. Ammon, I guess you finished up with lunch now. Uh, you wanted to answer some questions first, and we'll get right to those because these, these people have taken the time to ask you their questions, and you want to answer them. The first question comes from Dan Erskine. He writes, Mr. Bundy, I would like to have your input on the following. Although I agree that the Constitution disallows the federal government to possess outside of territorial status lands beyond Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, I disagree that the federal government can give the lands back to the states. To do so would unequally benefit one group of U.S. citizens over another. However, every state that joined the Union has in its enabling document a clause that requires the federal government to sell the public lands it held and give a percentage of the sales to the state. Example, the Nevada Enabling Act of 1864, Section 10, 5% of subsequent sales of public lands by United States to be paid to state for public roads and irrigation and be it further enacted that 5% of the proceeds of the sales of all public lands lying within said state, which shall be sold by the United States subsequent to the admission of said state into the Union, after deducting all the expenses incident to the same, shall be paid to the said state for the purpose of making and improving public roads, <laughs> constructing ditches <laughs> or canals, to affect a general system of irrigation of the agriculture land in the state as the legislature shall direct. I am not aware of any state government agreements that rescinds this requirement. So wouldn't it be more effective? Wouldn't it be a more effective way to move the federal government from occupying the public lands? Thank you, Dan Erskine. All right, so I there's another question there, I think, from another individual. Uh, let me get it oh. here. Yes, it yes, on, from Deb. Uh, I apologize. Talk, no, that's fine. It's, uh, she's talking about uh, wanting me to explain Article 1, A17. She said, explain and wanted me to explain it again. And that was from Deb Edmund. And so I'm going to answer those questions together, Jared. And... Uh, I know that it was a, a long question from Dan, but it was actually a very important question, and same with uh, Deb. So if I could answer that and if I could get uh, keep people's attention long enough, I hope that uh, you'll be able to see how important uh, these things are to us and to our future and to our, uh, and to our liberty and our freedom. Now, I'm going to start, I'm going to answer this question a little more unusual because I'm going to just answer by teaching a principle and teaching uh, basically what the founders understood and put in the Constitution. And that, that is that everything comes from the earth. Everything. Everything that we need to survive, to prosper, to enjoy, to protect ourselves, and so on, comes from the land and resources our food, our homes, our clothing, our vehicles, even our phones that we love so much, and our computers. All of that comes from the land and the resources. Everything. Everything that we eat and use and need. And because of this, all wealth comes from the earth. And with wealth comes power. And so land and resources equals wealth and power. And therefore, if a small group of people get control of the earth and its resources, then they will have ultimate power to control everything and everybody. If they can control the land, the water, and the minerals, and not allow people to use it or restrict it or to make money off of it, they have full control over everything and everybody. And to give you an example it's of that, if, it's if, an innate facility. if I am, my family's hungry and I need to grow something to produce food for my family, 
and I had to get permission from them, and they say no, what am I to do? Starve to death? If I need to build a home to protect my family from the elements, to get them out of, uh, and, and protect them, and I ask for permission to get the materials to build my home, and they say no, what am I to do? Go homeless? Or let's make it a little more modern here and say, let's say I have a new invention that I believe is going to be very beneficial to mankind, and I want to uh, develop that and benefit from that invention, sell it, and uh, and help others to use it. And but I need materials to build that to 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 build that invention, and they say no, then I don't get to build it. And I don't get, others don't get to use it, and they don't get to trade it and benefit from it. And uh, so the drafters of the Constitution understood uh, the ultimate power to control land and resources, and that it was not safe consolidated in the hands of a small group of people. They determined that the safest place for this tremendous power was distributed or disposed to individuals all over the country people who would use the land and resources to survive, prosper, and pursue happiness, including freely trading with each other. With small pieces of land and resources distributed to millions of people all over the country, it would be difficult, almost impossible, for tyrants to consolidate the land and resources and use it for their own benefit while they control the lives and happiness of other people. The founders believed that one purpose of government was to assist the people in peacefully distributing or disposing of the land to the people as soon as possible. The sooner the land could be disposed of to the people, the less likely it could be consolidated and used as a tool of oppression. So we see the value of that. So everybody, the plan was that everybody could own a little piece of earth and its resources to live to have liberty on, and to pursue happiness with. And as long as they could freely trade the resources with each other, great prosperity and happiness would occur. And so uh, let me just um, summarize here a little bit this principle. So uh, everything mankind needs comes from the earth. Uh, people cannot live without the land and the resources. They cannot have liberty without the land and the resources. They cannot pursue happiness without the land and, the res and its resources, and it is not safe in the hands of a small group of people. Therefore, the founders saw it as a government responsibility to dispose of the land and the resources to the people as soon as possible, and then protect the people in their right to property. So this is, this is what happened for almost 150 years. People kept moving further west and claimed their piece of, of the land and resources. The country prospered, and in fact, it thrived beyond what anyone ever imagined. And why did it do this? Because people had access to the land and resources. They could live, trade, invent, build, and dream. They were free men on their own little piece of earth. Then, uh, around the turn of the century, something strange began to happen. Something strange <clears throat> west of the Colorado Rocky Mountains. A small group of very powerful people in, fe in the federal government began to claim control of the vast amounts of land and resources in the state and use it for private purposes. With the West being arid and prim primarily unoccupied, no one, not even the states, questioned whether this const this was constitutionally legal or not. They just didn't question it. Even though U.S. Congress was making concerted ever efforts to dispose of the land to the people in congressional acts like the Desert Entry Act, the Stock Raising Did Homestead Act, from an inmate facility. and the Taylor Grazing Act, while Congress was in the attitude of disposal, this small group of very powerful people in the federal government continued to adversely claim more and more of the West. Until today, 
They claim over 50% of the western land, approximately 586 million acres, and 72% of the subsurface minerals, oil, gold, silver, platinum, copper, iron, natural gas, gravel, sand, lumber, grazing, and so on. Their latest conquest? To control all of the water in the West. And they are making good headway. Um, let me get organized here a little bit. So, how have they done this? How did they do this? Well, first of all, they pulled the wool over the eyes of the Western people with terms like your public land or your national parks with endangered species need your protection or keep public lands public or with fairy tales of conservation. When in reality, it is a hoax to control the land and resources, consolidate power in their hand, putting the people of the Western states in absolute despotism. Those who are part of this oligarchy are those who work for them, benefit handsomely from the land and resources with high paying income, the latest equipment, access to enjoy their personal parks, acting as kings on the land, and considering the people as their serves, while the people beg for small crumbs of the resources at inflated prices to survive. People in states like Nevada, with 89% of its land and resources controlled by this relatively small group of people, feel the effects worst most. Once a thriving agriculture and mining state, now all but the big cities are ghost towns. And even the big cities, surviving only on outside sources as they beg for federal funding just to pay the bills. Nevada has enough wealth in its silvery rills and its sage and the pine to prosper all the people comfortably, to pay its own bills and to still not hinder the hunting, hiking, or camping we enjoy so much. Yet the people of Nevada have no say on what goes on in most of their own state. They have been stripped from the right to local self-governing, denied a Republican form of government. Through deception and strategic positioning, this small group of very powerful people in the federal government have implemented adverse possession and consolidated the Western lands and resources for their own control and benefit. Now I could speak to you for hours and probably bore you to death about the facts of how this all happened, about the Northwest West Ordinance put in effect six months before the Constitution, how in a desire to pay the war debt, this ordinance set a pattern of disposal that was not intended to be carried on after the ratification of the Constitution. How the Enabling Act, admitting a state into the Union, is a legal transfer of title of all the unappropriated lands and resources, a transfer of ownership from U.S. Congress to the state, or more correctly, from all the people of the United States to the people of that state. We could detail how terminology of the Enabling Act have been strategically and deceptively misused by this small combination of people to strip the Western states of their sovereignty in an effort to control the land and resources. I could explain and give fact after fact of how these conspirators have duped the Western citizens into believing that the land and resources are better off in their hands and not in the hands of the local people. I could cite stats after stats of how these modern-day robbers are destroying the land, burning it up, killing the wildlife, restricting the public access, and plundering the resources to fund their personal pursuit and ideologies. I can point out incident after incident of people who U.S. Congress or the states dispose the land or resources to that are now being targeted stripped of their preemptive property right, and driven off the land. I can show you how the laws have been manipulated, eroded, and corrupted 
into positioning the Western lands and resources. In the event a third-party call is detected, your call will be terminated without warning. In, into positioning the Western lands and resources as this private property from an inmate facility. As private property of these small of this small group of powerful people. I can show you how no constitutional rights are being afforded the American people if they step across the boundaries onto land claimed by these people. How the local people are in great danger for even living next to this land. I can show you the irony in how the states have allowed this to go on in fear of losing the funding they receive from the very people who have extracted the wealth from the states. We could go into detail about how Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2, the property clause of the U.S. Constitution, requires Congress to dispose of the land and resources and was only and only allowed Congress to control the land and resources while it was a territory. How as soon as it became a state, the control was transferred to the people of that state. Also, how Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 requires federal officials, if property is needed in the state, to purchase it with consent of the state legislatures, limiting federal officials from using the property for anything but military purposes, international trade purposes, or buildings needed to fulfill the enumerated responsibilities found in Section 1, Clause 8 of the Constitution. We could further discuss how Article 4, Section 4, guarantees the right of every state within the Union a Republican form of government, which is the right of local people to govern its own laws, lands, resources, and police force. We could drill into Article 4, Section 4, which reads, The citizen of each state shall be entitled to the privileges and immunities of citizens of the several states how the citizens of the East have access to their lands and resources, but the Western lands and resources have been held away from the citizens of the West. Like I said, I could spend hours discussing these topics, but I will end by going back to how I started. The people cannot live and be free without the right of property to the land and resources in which they reside. Everything comes from the earth. It is God's gift to us. So that's my response, Jared. It's a good response. Without, we can argue that. Without resources, what are you going to make? What are you going to live on? Nothing. You are, like you said, begged for crumbs. The next question is from Anne. Where is Donald Trump in all this? She thinks he would have stepped in by now. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> Well, I, uh, you know, you might have the answer better than, that, than I do, Jared, but, I mean, I have a couple of things to point out, uh, but I don't know where he's at. I wish I did know. Um, I hope that he still, or, or, or I hope that he had plans to help us, and I hope that he still has those plans. Let's say that. But yeah, yeah. One yeah. minute remaining. Uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen. Three minutes, join us back here on the Ammon Bundy public figure page. Like, share it with your friends. This is the real story. Don't miss it. Be right back. Sheriff here, but evidently we don't have a sheriff here. His five minutes is up. 
Now we're going to go and take our land back and declare freedom and liberty here in this land. Is yeah, God, yeah, yeah. yeah. God going to be with us? Do we yeah. all feel yeah. good? Yeah. Okay. Our, one thing I'm going to do, Ivan Bundy's going to turn cattle out of his farm. They're going to go out on the open range where they belong. And we're, we're yeah. going to go and take the rest of them out of the compound trails up here above the freeway. Yeah. This should be the governor of the Nevada's job, but he's uh, actually going up to the these cattle to go to California. Yeah. So if they haven't went to California yet, let's go get those cattle. And all we got to do is turn, open the gate, and let them back down on the river, and they're home. safety here. We're going to go up the freeway. We're going to block the freeway. When we get to the Tocop Bridge, we're going to get out of our cars, and we're going to uh, go uh, and open the to panels. These horse people are going to pull up the power line road, and they're going to meet us at the Tocop Bridge, underneath the Tocop to to Bridge. Get it going, cowboys. Let's go get it done. <laughs> Okay, we're back, my fellow Americans. I wish I could say Ammon Bundy was calling back, but the nice boys and girls at Nevada Southern seem to have taken away his phone privileges again. When these guys talk, they get shut up, locked up, shot at, thrown away, beat up. And uh, that's what life's like in the land of the free in uh, 2017 in, under this oppressive regime. Since somebody was asking about what Donald Trump's going to do about it, I don't know. 
poor Jerry DeLimas thought he might have had an eight hole, but he just got eight years. So, you know, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar with Jerry DeLimas, he wasn't even up there in, in Oregon. He went up there to say hi for a couple of days, and he made a documentary, which is probably what got him in a lot of trouble. But he was at the ranch in April of 2014, and well, they went after everybody they could, and he was one of the guys that got scooped up, and uh, he got eight years. He got eight years, but he was the campaign manager for the Veterans for Trump campaign in the, in the great state of New Hampshire. You know, live free or die, I guess. That's just on the license plate. But Jerry DeLemus thought he saw a good vision with the Donald, so he volunteered to run the veterans for trump campaign now new hampshire is a swing state so you got to get it and you want to get it early jerry delimus was the man that got the donald moving on the ground out there in new hampshire and this is how he is repaid former you know marine all christian good man friend of humanity like everybody else that's locked up here i don't know when the donald's going to intervene one word the p word pardon makes all this go away like when i called uh, my senator mike lee another constitutional pajama wearing do nothing he's all about the constitution to get himself elected but after that after you know not gonna stand he never went to the refuge to see how the blm was spending the money he gave them no 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 wasn't going to do that but mr constitutional mr lee or anybody, Ted Cruz, all these other zeros, all they all they would have to do is go to court and be a witness, and then, hey, all this thing all goes away. But I don't know that that's going to happen without your overwhelming support. I'm pretty irritated. I've called Nevada Southern so many times. I've got the number memorized: seven five one forty five hundred. Press zero for dispatch. Press four for public affairs if you want to talk to that nice. I heard they got a new one, so maybe that's okay. Be nice, but these guys are such losers. Not nice. Not nice boys and girls at all. They just took away Mr. Bundy's phone privileges. Never mind, he's been there for 18 months. No bail, no trial, but... Yeah, land of the free. Yeah, yeah, free. No, 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 no. You just haven't been caught yet, my friend. You just haven't been caught. I he would have called back by now, so he's hopefully he doesn't end up in in the hole again. But why don't you give them a call and ask seven seven five seven five one forty five hundred? Maybe go out there and see some of the guys today. I think visiting hours are. No, no, today's uh, today. Yeah, Tuesday. Check for visiting hours. It's usually 3 to 8 and then 8 to 3 on Saturday, I believe. But see what's going on. This is where we're at. Uh, the next question was from a guy named Jeff. And, and how prophetic, sir? Well, you just know what you're dealing with. You just know what's going on. And he says when your trial comes up, Navarro is going to shut you guys down with rulings, just like she is doing in this trial, just like she did five minutes ago are all y'all prepared to get your defense one way or the other in front of the jury this is a one-shot deal by hook or by hook. you have to get your full defense out in front of the jury even if you are uh, sided with contempt of court yeah uh you go into judge navarro's courtroom and you're not allowed to look up you're not allowed to look at your wife which you haven't seen for a year and a half you're not allowed to rub your nose the wrong way but if the prosecution gets in trouble, the lawyers and the judge go to the sidebar while the jury's given a candy bar, tax dollars at work, and I guess they work out the little conspiring details over at the sidebar, and there you go. So what do you have? It's easy for us to say what we would do. We're not there yet, but someone's got to say something. How else can you, how else, you're not allowed to present the witnesses you want for the defense. You're not allowed to call certain people. 
I, this is I don't know that we've ever seen anything like this outside you know in, in this country saw these things during World War II in Germany but this is a scam pirates run the whole show talking about uh, expert witnesses probably the best 20 bucks I have, I've spent in the last two years uh, I bought a, a man's dissertation Dr. Angus McIntosh he's a former fish uh, no no former forest service employee and that he found his conscience you know he was one of those bureaucrats that actually still had some of the light of Christ left in him and he saw what they were doing and he started asking questions and he was still pretty ignorant but he was going to change all that but one day he was asking a supervisor well if they own their allotments how can we tell them to do anything? Because he just assumed that they didn't own their allotments, their grazing allotments. But truth be known, ranchers do own their allotments, their real property. Well, then his supervisor looked at him with this crazy look in his eyes and says, we get them to sign something. It's like a gold digger wife that marries the millionaire. You know, once she's got you under contract, all of a sudden it is not you, it is we, and I'm going to take your stuff. And that's what the BLM does, because people don't know they're right. You get them to sign something, and then you're in their you're in their life, and then you take their your their life away from them, and, and that's why these are the last rancher family standing in Clark County, Nevada. 52 other families no longer make a living off the range out there. Back in the day, you had, again, you make improvements to the land and there was a way to own a real property. The Bundys have 11 water properties, and each property has a certain amount of acreage that you're allowed to graze cattle on. They don't own everything. Uh, they own the forage and they own those waterways. And with that, they can make a living. 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 This is the last Richard family really got scooped up by the Fed coach. And here we are. Oh boy, land of the free. Wave that flag. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to put some beef to my eyes because everyone's been driven off the range. And what are going to do to everybody? This is a June 21. This is a June 21. But anyway. Angus McIntosh, I don't think he'll be allowed to testify in uh, Queen Navarro's courtroom. I just, I don't think that's going to happen. That's just not going to happen. Maybe not. Believe in miracles. Keep praying. Keep your questions coming up at the Ammon Bundy public figure Facebook page. Get this word, get this message out, get the word out. We... What happens to our fellow man will happen to us. There's nothing new here under the sun. And don't you like to eat, ladies and gentlemen? Don't you want to be able to make a living? Access to resources. What are you going to build? I, w I met some Russian people in, in church on Sunday, and, and I've met other Russians before. 74% of the Russian population lives in an apartment building. They don't live outside of town. They don't even have, uh, they don't have access to, to, you can't even grow a garden unless you grow some plants on your, on your balcony, maybe if it fades the right way. All the, all the Russian people are packed in cities, and that's by design, because in communism, everything was owned by the state. You did not have access to personal property, the, the means of production. So 74% of people were crammed into cities, and they were a lot easier to manage that way. That's why they put Indians on reservations, because they're easier to keep track of when they're not allowed to move about and provide for themselves. 
and they become dependent on Republicans and Democrats for their living and their, their daily bread. So all these people in Russia, their dream is to actually own their apartment, not to have a house where you can have a garden, certainly not to have a ranch or anything like that. And Russia is a big place. This is the same model in China. Same thing. People are crammed into cities. And they want to do that here, and they are doing it here. Back to the last rancher standing. All those other ranching families in Clark County have other jobs or, or moved away. Burns, Oregon, 70% of the people now in Harney County uh, work for the government or receive some kind of freebie from the government because all the access to potential wealth has been removed from their grass. They can't log, they can't mine, they can't raise crops, they can't raise cows. The BLM will go burn down their house and their range. And and there you have it. It's a, it's a nice picture we painted for ourselves All over here in Salt Lake. And it's getting harder and harder to, to, to own houses and property. The money's worth less and less. and Everything's controlled. And when you control access, again, to resources... What's left is going to go up in value because there's less of it. People are competing for the same stuff. So you got houses that are harder and harder to afford. So what do they build in uh, Salt Lake City or, or L.A. or wherever you're at? Apartments, condos. And we got one of these little trains that drives around the city that started out as a federal program. Call it the Utah Tracks. And it goes by some of these apartment buildings. Again, we're seeing the same thing in China. People live in apartment buildings. They go outside in the morning. They get on the train. They get bus to wherever they're going, and then they come home. And that's it. No cars, no land, no freedom. That's how they keep control of you. Not to be negative, but my neighbor called me, uh, text me. Believe it or not, some, some of my neighbors value my opinion and uh, they don't always follow it they don't always embrace it but they ask once in a while and she asked me who I was voting for mayor in my little town here big town and I told her and then we start talking about agenda 21 and and uh, it's pretty bad in Utah it's bad it's bad everywhere but Agenda 21 is happening big time in Utah, and I would prefer to elect candidates that recognize that, know what it is, and are willing to stop it, instead of every Republican and Democrat just pushing the Agenda 21 forward, comrade, forward, to hell, because that's where we're able to stop it, and this group. It's our own. Anyway, I told her that, that didn't support Agenda 21, and and uh, she's going to vote for the other guy anyway. So, good luck out there. I guess Ammon uh, has been chastised for exercising his freedom of speech. So why don't we exercise our freedom of speech? Give them a call at 775-751-4500. Maybe we'll be back here again in the last and free to talk about these issues. Like and share this page. Put your own opinions down there, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'll talk to you then. To be paid to state for public roads and irrigation, and be it further enacted that five percentum of the proceeds of the sales of all public lands lying within said state which shall be sold by the United States subsequent to the admission of said state into the Union, after deducting all the expenses incident to the same, shall be paid to the said state for the purpose of making and improving public roads, <laughs> constructing ditches <laughs> or canals, to effect a general system of irrigation of the agriculture land in the state as the legislature shall direct. I am not aware of any state government agreements that rescinds this requirement. So wouldn't it be more effective? Wouldn't it be a more effective way to move the federal government from occupying the public lands if it does? Thank you, Dan Erskine.
All right. So I there's another question there, I think, from another individual. Uh, let me get it oh. here. Yes, it's yes, on, from Deb. Uh, I apologize. Talk, no, that's fine. It's, uh, she's talking about uh, wanting me to explain Article 1, 817. She said, explain it and wanted me to explain it again. And that was from Deb Edmund. And so I'm going to answer those questions together, Jared. And uh, I know that it was a, a long question from Dan, but it was actually a very important question, and same with uh, Deb. So if I could answer that and if I could get uh, keep people's attention long enough, I hope that uh, you'll be able to see how important uh, these things are to us and to our future and to our, uh, and to our liberty and our freedom. Now, I'm going to start. I'm going to answer this question a little more unusual because I'm going to just answer it by teaching a principle and teaching uh, basically what the founders understood and put in the Constitution. And that, that is that everything comes from the earth. Everything, everything that we need to survive, to prosper, to enjoy, to protect ourselves, and so on, comes from the land and resources. Our food, our homes, our clothing, our vehicles, even our phones that we love so much, and our computers, all of that comes from the land and the resources. Everything, everything that we eat and use and need. And because of this, all wealth comes from the earth. Uh, and with wealth comes power. And so land and resources equals wealth and power. And therefore, if a small group of people get control of the earth and its resources, then they will have ultimate power to control everything and everybody. If they can control the land, the water, they determined that the safest place for this tremendous power was distributed or disposed to individuals all over the country, people who would use the land and resources to survive, prosper, and pursue happiness, including freely trading with each other. With small pieces of land and resources distributed to millions of people all over the country, it would be difficult, almost impossible, for tyrants to consolidate the land and resources and use it for their own benefit while they control the lives and happiness of other people. The founders believed that one purpose of government was to assist the people in peacefully distributing or disposing of the land to the people as soon as possible. The sooner the land could be disposed of to the people, the less likely it could be consolidated and used as a tool of oppression. So we see the value of that. So everybody... The plan was that everybody could own a little piece of earth and its resources to live, to have liberty on, and to pursue happiness with. And as long as they could freely trade the resources with each other, great prosperity and happiness would occur. And so uh, let me just um, summarize here a little bit this principle. So uh, everything mankind needs comes from the earth. Uh, water and the minerals and not allow people to use it or restrict it or to make money off of it. They have full control over everything and everybody. And to give you an example it's of that, if, it's if, an innate facility. If I am, my family's hungry and I need to grow something to produce food for my family and I have to get permission from them and they say no, what am I to do? Starve to death? If I need to build a home to protect my family from the elements, to get them out of, uh, and, and protect them, and I ask for permission to get the materials to build my home, and they say no, what am I to do? Go homeless? Or let's make it a little more modern here and say, let's say I have a new invention that I believe is going to be very beneficial to mankind. And I want to uh, develop that and benefit from that invention, sell it, and, uh, and help others to use it. And, but I need materials to build, that, to, to, to build that invention. And they say no. And I don't get to build it. And I don't get, others don't get to use it. And they don't get to trade it and benefit from it. And uh, so the drafters of the Constitution understood 
uh, the ultimate power to control land and resources, and that it was not safe, consolidated in the hands of a small group of people. Amen. Of the jury in the court of public opinion, my name is Jared Green, and that's about the only court that matters these days. Ammon Bundy is joining you again to talk about what's going on in his world, and you need to pay attention. This affects all of us. Ammon, I guess you finished up with lunch now. Uh, you wanted to answer some questions first, and we'll get right to those because these, these people have taken the time to ask you their questions, and you want to answer them. The first question comes from Dan Erskine. He writes, Mr. Bundy, I would like to have your input on the following. Although I agree that the Constitution disallows the federal government to possess outside of territorial status lands beyond Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, I disagree that the federal government can give the lands back to the states. To do so would unequally benefit one group of U.S. citizens over another. However, every state that joined the Union has in its enabling document a clause that requires the federal government to sell the public lands it held and give a percentage of the sales to the state. Example, the Nevada Enabling Act of 1964, Section 10, 5% of subsequent sales of public lands by United States 